Good morning, and, and God bless America. What time is it, Mike? Six till? Okay, well, the, we got most of the choir in here. We'll go ahead and I'll start announcements, and then we can get services going. Uh, obviously, today is a great day. Uh, we're honoring our, our veterans today for Veterans Day, and uh, we have a special honor guard here today from South Rowan High School. You'll recognize some of them, and we're real proud of them. Uh, a lot in the bulletin and a lot going on right now, so uh, let me touch base on as much of it as I can. Uh, obviously, we have the uh, registration books in each pew. We'd like for you to sign those, pass them down so we'll know who was here and uh, who to make contact with if we need to. Um, last week, uh, you chose the initial 12 people to choose from the council which we will actually, on next Sunday, we will choose six from these 12. And those 12 were not listed in the bulletin, so I'm going to call their names out. Clark Adams, Joe Allen, Mike Beber, Delana Davis, Steve Garver, Lee Goodnight, Ellen Isaacs, Jerry Carricker, Shelby Carricker, Jason Ritchie, Eddie Starnes, and Omar Williams. So from those 12 at the congregational next week, you will write down your choice of six of those 12, and we'll pick our councilman for next year based on that. Um, also, the women of Concordia will uh, have a covered dish this Tuesday in the fellowship hall uh, at 6.30. Uh, and today, we're having the youth is doing a fundraiser. Proceeds go to purchase presents for a Christmas adopted family. Uh, it will be in the fellowship hall immediately following the service. And they wanted me to make sure that, that you recognize the arrangement when you walk in. Uh, on your right and on your left, towards the, going towards the stage, there are tables lined up that have the soups. Uh, directly in front of the stage is where the desserts are. And the drinks are over at the kitchen serving area. So uh, different suits on each side. So you may want to sample you know, all of them. But it, so you won't find the same thing on the right hand side as you do on the left. Uh, I do recommend that you look through the bulletin. I tried to touch uh, the, the major points. Uh, I will also point out again, going back to honor our veterans, there's an extensive list of people from Concordia that have served in the armed services. So look through that and be prayerful about those people who have served or presently serving uh, because we owe so much appreciation to them. Are there any other announcements that I may have missed? If not, I'll turn it over to Pastor Boss. Continuing with Coral, uh, Omar was making an announcement about our membership. A couple of membership uh, items. Uh, on page 9 of your bulletin, there are some photographs of our new members. Uh, photographs of our new members. And one of our new members, uh, Billy Strong, had knee replacement surgery last week. And Billy is now home and doing well. But he'll be a while before he's back out and kicking again here without following knee replacement surgery. So remember Bill and his wife Phyllis. Also remember a member of Carolyn Mall. Carolyn will have surgery this week at Carolina Medical Center, Charlotte. So remember Carolyn. And of course, uh, as we stated earlier in the announcement, so we're just so happy with the Figer family, Jonathan and Amanda, uh, and our uh, new baby daughter, Abigail. We're just very proud of this family and all the things they do for our congregation. We're uh, just a beautiful family. Uh, Pastor Ken and his uh, the confirmation uh, group will be coming back this afternoon. They have been uh, this weekend at Luther Ridge for confirmation studies to prepare the youth for adult membership in our church. Uh, again, I'd like to thank you for all your prayers and your concerns. Uh, Many of you uh, come up to me today and ask, oh, how you doing? Can you hear anything? <laughs> well, yes and no. 
Uh, October the 8th, I had another hole put in the side of my head. Another hole put in my head. <laughs> and they had the implant put in, which is a fancy way of saying, it's, I now have an electric ear. An electric ear. And it doesn't hear words like you speak. It here produces electric sounds. It's like, the best way to explain it, like watching a Roadrunner cartoon and you hear a lot of explosion and most of all you hear beep, 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 beep. <laughs> That's what you hear. <laughs> and it'll take my brain, they say six months. It may take me six years. <laughs> I may have to go back to the hospital and have a brain transplant to understand this electric here. But it's exciting. Uh, I hear a turn signal blinking. I'm not, and I hear a, a clock on the other side of the house ticking. Uh, I hear doorbells ringing. Things I have not heard in 40 years. So this is really amazing. So just be patient with me because I still I'm figuring it out <laughs> as we go along. But thank you again for your prayers uh, during my surgery. Thank you. Let's uh, uh, begin now with our, um, our prelude. We're so proud to have the junior ROTC unit from South Korean High School with us. And following the prelude, following the prelude of our handbell choir, then the ROTC unit will bring in the colors. And we will stand and do the Pledge of Allegiance with them. It's just uh, thank you men so much for coming and being with us.
Holy is the Lord, the Almighty. He was, he is, and he is to come. He is worthy of glory and honor and power. He created all things by his will they came to be. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain. Worthy to take the scroll and break its seals. By his blood he purchased for God. People of every race and tongue, of every folk and nation. Christ made of them a kingdom and priests to serve our God. And they shall reign on earth forever. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Let us pray. O oh God, you show forth your almighty power, chiefly by reaching out to us in mercy. Grant us the fullness of your grace, strengthen our trust in your promises, and bring all the world to share in the treasures that come through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Unit to come up and join me, help me with the uh, children's sermon. If two would stand over here, and maybe two over here. Uh, well, appreciate it. Come on up. That's fine. Just come up to here. <laughs> they'll, they'll let you out. They'll let you out. Okay, it's good. Everybody here now? Uh, we're so glad to have it. Uh, most of you know these two guys, Alex and, and Marty. This is Stephen. Stephen and Angel, and they're in the Junior ROTC at South Rim High School, and we're just so happy to have them here with our special uh, Veterans Day worship service. They just added so much when they brought in the colors uh, and presented the colors and then led us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, I don't know about you, but when we finished the Pledge of Allegiance at the early service, and, and while, just a while ago, when you were over at the flag leading Pledge of Allegiance, 
when we finished the Pledge of Allegiance, I wanted to say amen. <laughs> it just seemed like we need to say amen because this is what we really believe as Americans. This is what we believe as Americans. And we're so proud of our handbell choir. Y'all did a great job with the music, God Bless America. Y'all really did a good, super job, super job. Great. Uh, Y'all really got the rhythm. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so what a, what, a, what a great worship service we have to honor our veterans today uh, with the handbell choir, the junior ROTC from South Loran. It's just a great, great service. And the patriotic hymns we have today. I want to introduce you to one of our veterans uh, that served our country. He is, uh, he is, one, he is uh, one of my brother in law I had two brother-in-laws. I didn't realize I started adding it up. Uh, most of you know Grady Wood sitting out there, uh, Mary Geraldine. He's, if, if you cut him, he will bleed marine blue. <laughs> blue. <coughs> and my other brother-in-law is uh, Herbert, Hubert, Hubert Walters. Hubert Mary Mitchie's sister, Pat. And in this photograph of in his uniform, he don't look any much older than you. Know, maybe he may have been maybe 18, 17, 18 years old, something like that. He looks so young, young. But he joined the Army at that time. By, they didn't have an Air Force. So he joined the Army. But he was in airplanes. He was a, in a B-17 uh, Flying Fortress Bomber. And he was such a crack shot. He was the tail gunner. And he would protect the planes when enemy fighters would come and try to destroy their airplane. He was, uh, Sergeant Walters was the tail gunner in World War II. World War II. So young. So young. He also served in the Korean War. Uh, the Korean War. And then many years afterwards in peacetime. He served all of 20, 24 years in the service. So anytime you see someone in uniform, in the uniform of our country, we need to honor them and, and say, thank you for your service. I want you to practice that with me. This is important. Okay, on three. One, two, three. Thank you for your service. Anytime you see someone in uniform like these guys, uh, they're, uh, representing our school here with us today. And we're so proud to have you here. And we're so proud of all of our veterans who serve us and serve our country. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. Continue to bless your veterans who serve our country and provide us with the land of freedom. Bless each of them. In your name we pray. Amen. <coughs> wow, it's a good group here today. It's good to <laughs> Uh, I don't think Halloween's over, is it? <laughs> you got to follow the mouth of it. Okay, well, thank you for coming down. Thank you. <laughs> thank you,
Our Old Testament lesson this morning comes from 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 10 through 16, as found on page 2 in your bulletin. So Elijah went out and went to Zarephath. When he came to the gate of the town, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel so that I may drink. As she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. But she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of meal in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I am now gathering a couple of sticks so that I may go home and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you have said, but first make me a little cake of it and bring it to me, and afterwards make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, The jar of meal will not be emptied, and the jug of oil will not fail until the day of the Lord sends rain on earth. She went and did as Elijah said, so that she, as well as he and her household, ate for many days. The jar of meal was not emptied, neither did the jug of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. Word of God, word of life. God. Our responsive reading comes from Psalm 146. Praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God and my grace. Don't put your confidence in powerful people. When they breathe their last, they return to the earth. But joyful are those who have the God of Israel as their helper. He made heaven and earth, the sea, and everything in them. He gives justice to the oppressed and food to the hungry. The Lord Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are weighed down. The Lord Lord protects the foreigners among us. He cares for the orphans and widows. The Lord will reign forever. He will be your God, O Jerusalem, throughout the generations. Our New Testament reading comes from Hebrews chapter 9, verses 24 through 28. For Christ did not enter a sanctuary made by human hands, a mere copy of the true one, but he entered into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Nor was it to offer himself again and again as the high priest enters the holy place year after year with blood that is not his own. For then he would have had to suffer again and again since the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of the age to remove sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for mortals to die once, And after that, the judgment. So Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with the sin, but to save those who eagerly waiting for him. This is the word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus taught, he said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and to be greeted with respect in the marketplace and to have the best seats in the synagogue and places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearance say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. And he sat down opposite the treasure and watched the crowd putting money into the treasure. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came in and put in two small copper coins which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty has put in everything that she has, all she has to live on. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. A young couple had gone out to, uh, to eat supper and then go to the movies and it was getting very late in the evening and the young man brought the girl back to her home and walked her up to the front door and was getting ready to tell her good night and he sort of leaned over on, against, on the wall against the door right there and then leaned down very close to her and said, how about a kiss? I wasn't in the 8.30 service, I'm sorry. Uh, anyway, uh, and she said, oh no, someone may see us. And she said, look, it's dark. It's very late at night and nobody on the street. Who's going to see us? And she said, oh, well, you never know. And it's just too risky. We can't do that. And she said, oh, please, 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 please. And about that time, the porch light came on, the door flew open, and the sister of the girl came out, half asleep, in her pajamas, hair on rollers. She said, Dad sent me down to tell you, go ahead and kiss him, or I will kiss him, or Dad will come down and kiss him. But we are trying to sleep Tell him to take his hand off the intercom button. <laughs> in, our, in our families, we learn new things all the time. In our families, there always a, a, each day is a new adventure, learning something about each other as a family. And so it is here at Concordia, as our church family, as a church family, we gather here every Sunday for worship to hear God's word and to learn lessons of life. Our lesson for today is, very simply, Soldiers of the Cross. Soldiers of the Cross. What an honor it is to, on this November the 11th, the actual day of Veterans Day, to be here together, to honor our soldiers, our soldiers of the cross who serve our country at home and around the world. We, uh, many of you here were in military service. If you were in military service, would you please stand up for us? We want to honor you. If you were in military service, would you please stand up? Please stand up. And our cameraman up in the balcony, you couldn't see him, but Mike Weber is wearing his uniform, which is an authentic uh, United States Calvary uniform. You expect to see a horse parked out front in the church. <laughs> well, that's, a, well, that's a great uniform, Mike. Thank you for wearing that.
Melinda Dax tells us about uh, a, one of our soldiers, our Sadai. His name is Tyler Jeffrey. And he is, was in service to our country in Afghanistan. And on October the 6th, just a little over a month ago, Tyler was with his uh, troop, his group, on a mission of patrol. And he, as he was walking by an explosive device, one of the enemy militants saw him in position near that explosion and triggered it, and it set off in a, a bomb. Tyler's body received the blow of that blast. He had burns over his body. He had damage to his eye and to his ear. And Tyler lost both of his legs, both of his legs. He is now at Walter Reed Army Hospital here in our country. He has, in October, he went through many, many painful surgeries, many. And thankfully, we can announce today that he is healing, that he is doing well, and his goal is to be able to travel all the way across the country to Fort Lewis, Washington State, when his uh, group, his military group, comes home from their deployment to, be, to meet his fellow soldiers. We pray that that will happen. But he will continue treatment and therapy at Walter Reed for 10 months, perhaps a year. He is one of many, many, many Americans who in Iraq and Afghanistan have made a great sacrifice for our country. 6,500 American soldiers have died in these wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. 6,500. Families have lost their loved ones. This is the price of freedom. This is what costs uh, have been paid for our freedom, that we can come to Concordia Church today and gather here for worship. And we always, always honor our veterans. As we told those children in the children's sermon, when you see someone in uniform, even walking down the street, just say simply, thank you for your service. When I'm out visiting with our congregational members, I'm reminded that all of us, all of us who confess the name of Christ are soldiers of the cross. And I see members of our congregation who have served con congregation here faithfully for 40, 50, 60, 70 years or more. What an example our members are to us. These faithful members who are here every Sunday, as long as they were able to get here, they were here every Sunday. And now as I visit with them, in their homes or nursing homes. I often read Psalm 16, verses 2 and 3. Preserve me, O God, for in you I put my trust. O my soul, you have said to the Lord, You are my Lord. My goodness is nothing apart from you. Now this is very, very important. Watch this. And to the saints who are on the earth, they are the excellent ones in whom is all my delight. God takes delight in his people. The saints of God make our God's heart happy. God loves us so much. We are his delight. We are his delight. And we are saints not because of all the good deeds we pile up, and do. Huh. We are saints because God makes us his people. It is his love that creates us and makes us into his people. Saints of God. It's been said that one huge draft horse can move by itself two tons of weight but if you take two draft horses and harness them together so they are working in harmony, two horses can move 23 tons of weight. 
We are as a people of God, joined together in the community of faith. And there is no limit to what God's power can do in us as his soldiers of the cross. We serve in his kingdom, and it is his power and might in us that moves us and carries us forward to accomplish his great mission in our lives and in his world. A little 12-year-old girl named Carrie was given the responsibility of watching over her little brother while mom went off for just a short time to go pick up some milk and a few groceries. And Carrie was so happy, you know, I'm, I'm going to be the lady of the house. <laughs> yes, mom, I will take good care of my beloved little brother. Bye-bye, mom, bye-bye. Now you can I'm in charge here, and you will do what I say. <laughs> That's the way it goes in family. <laughs> well, Terry went out to the mailbox to get the mail. To get, open the box, pull the box, mail out, see up the box. Turned around. She could not believe it. Their house was on fire. And just that fast, the fire had covered all of the house. And she ran right back into the house, fiery as it was, and searched for her little brother, who she found, he found the little boy on the floor. He had been pinned by a raptor that had fallen down on top of him. And with flames dancing around the hair, she was able to push off this heavy piece of wood and pick him up and carry him out. As they left the house, the roof collapsed in on them, behind them. One of the firemen commended the little girl, Terry, you're so brave, but what were you thinking running back into a burning building. She said, I was not thinking. I only heard the call of my little brother. Our brother Christ calls us, calls us with his voice of love. Come, pick up my cross and follow me. Today, become a soldier of the cross. Yes, we are soldiers of the cross, and there is more. There is more good news. The cross of Christ is a cross of victory, of victory. The bulletin cover, our secretary did a great job. If you just take this home, you got the whole sermon right in the front page. The cross of Christ on the hill, and then the, the image of our Lord and Savior in the foreground, and the key text of our lesson for this morning, Soldiers of the Cross. Christ will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. Save those who are eagerly waiting for him. That's us. That's us. That's you and I, brothers and sisters, as soldiers of the cross. We are eagerly waiting for our Lord Jesus Christ to come and we hear the call of his voice. Today, you are a part of my glorious kingdom. One church uh, in its uh, workroom uh, in this office had a large painting by a very famous artist, and it, the painting was full of many different colors, all kinds of colors, uh, bright reds, blues, orange, yellows, all colors that seemed to flash, all kinds of colors, beautiful colors. And one day the pastor was there, and a little, little boy named Adam, and they were looking at that painting, and Adam said, Pastor, do you see him? And Pastor looked at him. I can't see anything but all these colors. Sure you can. Right in the center, right in the center of that painting, you can see Jesus with his arms outstretched on the cross, right in the center. And this scholarly preacher of the gospel stroked his chin and looked and scratched his head. Adam... And then, like a cloud that passed over and it was gone, 
He could indeed see the Savior in the center of that painting with his arms outstretched. With his arms outstretched. It is the Savior who calls us and gives us the victory, the victory of a kingdom without end, a victory that we sing in one of our blessed old hymns we sing here at Concordia, Onward Christian Soldiers Marching as to War With the Cross of Jesus Going on Before. What a beautiful hymn. And this is this is our victory because we know with whom we walk, our Lord and Savior. Yes, all of the flashes and the colors and the distractions of our world at times makes it hard to see our Savior. It makes it hard. Sometimes the world is so real around us and we're so busy with schedules and appointments, it makes it hard to see our Savior. Hard, but not impossible. Moments can break into our life when our Lord is so real to us and he is with us. He is with us. Last week, uh, Mitch and I were making some visits in the Big Elm nursing home on Kanapolis. And I commend our young people today, our youth, uh, to also make, go to some of the homes where our, some of our members are. Go to some of the homes and ask, is there anyone here who never has a visitor? Never has a visitor. And visit that person. And your life will be enriched and blessed for the time you give as a visitor, as a soldier of the cross. Well, as Mitch and I were leaving uh, Big Al, we passed by a room and there was a gentleman lying on his bed. He had his quilt pulled up over him. He was on his side looking out toward us, and we waved at him. And he had one arm over a large book beside him in the bed. And we stopped and talked with him a little bit. And that, he had his Bible there. It was the biggest Bible I've ever seen. It was almost it's about the size of that Bible on that lectern there. I've never seen a Bible that big <laughs> in a private. People use them. If you read that Bible every day, your faith will be strong and your muscles will be strong from carrying it around. It's a powerful, it's a big Bible, thick. I said, sir, do you read your Bible a lot? He said, yes, I sure do. The Bible chases the devil out the door. <laughs> chases the devil out the door. That is a soldier of the cross who knows the victory. The peace of God that passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus.
living in the light of Christ, who reveals both our need and God's abundant love, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Dear Lord, we thank you this day for your people as they gather throughout this country and throughout this world to offer their praise unto you. We thank you, Lord, for those of service, both to our fellow man and to our country, and we praise you for the freedom that has been won by the victory, not only through Jesus Christ our Lord, but the victory and sacrifice of so many of those who have granted our freedom that we may gather here today to worship you and praise you in spirit and in truth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Father, for all those in need, we pray for your hand of healing upon them, for those facing surgeries this week, for those who are afflicted in body of illness and disease, for those who are recovering from treatments, we pray that you would continue to strengthen them both physically and spiritually, that your peace and mercy would be upon them, and that you would grant them your grace and love in their time of need. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Father, for your creation, you supply every need. You deliver rain when it is needed, the cool breeze, and the warming sun. We thank you for this day and for the beautiful weather that we have. We thank you that we have the opportunity to serve a God who is not only loving and graceful, but a God who is all-powerful, who controls the wind, the waves, the sun, the moon, and the stars, and who has put all in place. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Let us pray. God, our provider, all that we have is a sign of your love. All that we are is a gift from your hand. Receive these offerings along with our thanksgiving. Our lives may proclaim your care for creation, redeemed by Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the gracious gifts of the Lord God be upon you and increase the work of your hands. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace and share the good news. Thanks be to God. Yeah.